Welcome to Turning Point, the real estate show that defines your edge by empowering agents for the future. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host, Gil Sperling. So a minor change today. We don't have Gil Sperling here. He's in Australia, but you have me, Theo Fissa. I'm part of the growth team at Flow and really excited to be with you guys today. Today, we're talking about how successful agents make use of social media to stay top of mind. And we have two amazing guests. As per usual, we have industry leaders and leaders within their fields um, speaking to us today. I'm really excited because today we're going to be speaking about some really important points. Social media is something that everyone has a gut feeling about in the property industry that they need to be doing, something that they need to be on. But there's a lot of mystification around how we do so efficiently. And today we're going to be talking exactly to this point and demystifying that for sure. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to begin with the first point. And the first point is the importance of staying top of mind. And being top of mind is super important. We've seen this in the property industry for ages, um, from the billboards to the street pole ads to the sold signs. Everyone knows that it's important to be top of mind. And why is this? It's important to be top of mind because if you're more familiar with something, you naturally trust something more. For example, if you were to give someone a choice between a brand of a hamburger that they know versus a hamburger that they don't know, they're going to reach for that one that they know every single time. And social media allows us to become top of mind, create that trust, and create that uh, familiar feel with what it is that um, what it is that you do and how it is that you operate. So essentially, it, it allows a situation where people are coming to you and you're no longer reaching out to them anymore. So, and that's ultimately the goal, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? The goal is surely for us to be having people come to us and asking us for our advice on, on property, on transactions, on the value of our property, and many other things. Um, so in the interim, um, just making sure that we've, we've got Andrew on the line. Andrew, can you hear me now? Yeah, loud and clear. Thanks, Theo. Thanks very much for having us here today. Very, very much appreciated. Thank you. No, so it's awesome to have you on the show, and thank you so much for joining us. Andrew, um, maybe just before I ask you a quick question on this point, um, a quick introduction uh, and your background at EXP South Africa. <laughs> Thanks very much, Theo. Yes, I'm, I'm so pleased to be part of EXP South Africa. I've headed up the company now for 18 months. Uh, we've been trading here locally in South Africa since December 2020. And uh, we've just had a, a super exciting time. You know, we 460 plus agents now locally in South Africa. And just coming off the back of the fastest growing real estate company in the world, uh, very excited to be part of this team. Largest independent real estate company as it stands in the world. 82,000 agents, uh, 21 countries, two new countries announced. And we, were, we had the great pleasure as EXP South Africa as being one of the first countries to be announced out of Australia, UK, Canada, and USA. And uh, what a privilege to be part of this team. We've got super agents here locally in South Africa. McKeel being one of them, who we're going to chat to a little bit later. But uh, a wonderful team, a wonderful management team locally, and uh, just uh, a great time that we're having here. We're living our passion. We're having a whole lot of fun. And certainly a great privilege to be on your show here today with Flow Marketing. Much appreciated. So, I mean, thank you so much for that. I suppose this is really leads us into the point that I was just making. I mean, to be growing a business, to be growing a team, and specifically for agents to be growing their own personal brands. Um, I was just speaking to the importance of social media marketing, but before we even speak to social media, the importance of being top of mind and being a familiar brand. Uh, you, you slightly alluded to this already. Um, the, the statement I made is that the more familiar you are with something, the more likely you are to choose that thing. For example, if I were to put two burgers in front of you, you know the one brand, you don't know the other. Uh, you're probably going to reach for the one that you know and take a bite into it. Uh, what's your point of view um, on, on familiarity and how it affects uh, your team in the property industry? 
Yeah, yeah nice subject. And, uh, you know, the, I think I've got to look at it from a twofold point of view. One is obviously from a company structure perspective. And then secondly, from an agent perspective, with the latter being uh, more important when looking at the entire cycle of our processes. So what we did locally here in South Africa, we wanted to ensure that our brand was recognized. So what was very important to us was obviously to appoint a marketing company. Uh, we got it very much involved with a PR company through Hunt PR. We extended into merchandising, show, showing who we are around the country in terms of how the agents physically can merchandise themselves. But very importantly, we've got to get our brand out there. And uh, what's been extremely important in terms of those processes is the element of social media. Uh, if you look at LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, uh, go as far as TikTok, YouTube, uh, you'll always find an element of EXP. And uh, I think the brand strategy around where we've come from historically, if you think back, billboards, street poll ads, uh, media advertising in hard copy, et cetera, that is now all extended into social media spaces. And the lovely thing about this is agents have adopted it and agents have endorsed it. And you, you look at the clever agent and the excited and the energized agent that's out there in the marketplace who previously had the ability to go to events, to go to uh, presentations, to conferences uh, around South Africa and around the world. And the ability to go out into those spaces and physically network. Now, if you take the extension of social media and I'm quite an old chap, Theo, so I come from telex and fax and uh, computers. And what I've realized over time is you're no longer in a retail space. You're no longer in a shop window. You're no longer on a street pole ad. Sure. Where we've moved to is most certainly into social media. And I just love the experience of the agents taking our listing platform, uh, syndica syndicating out to... Uh, call it websites as such to expose for potential leads. For sure. But it is the clever agent and the proactive agent that really goes out there to extend into social media. And if you look at analytical social media, you can attract the right sort of audience. So collect the right form of data, create p uh, repetitive behavior, and really intrigue an audience through your own business network and build a bigger network, a bigger family, a bigger community through social media in particular. I couldn't agree with you more. I think it's more and more about the people. It's a people's business. Uh, it's a very personal transaction. Um, Maybe the most, the largest transaction people will ever make. And I think it is no longer a retail product per se, but it's important to communicate to audiences in a personable way that creates that type of mindness. And I think let's maybe just hop on to the next point because I, you've also already alluded to this and I, I'm really excited because we seem to be flowing the conversation quite nicely, excuse the pun. Um, the power of social media is amazing in that just in South Africa, for example, you've got 26 million people that are daily visitors spending a massive amount of time on the platforms, be it Facebook or Instagram or other, and it's a super engaged audience. Not only that, your ads, your campaigns, your creative themselves is quite editable and easily editable at that, unlike a street poll ad where the same thing needs to be stuck there for quite, quite some time. And then, obviously, we started talking to the opportunity to be able to target people more specifically, and algorithmically is the buzz term, really. Um, and further to that, you can reach your audiences at a predefined frequency and reach those audiences geographically exactly where you want to reach them. And this is all measurable. Uh, and I think that last point about it being measurable is super important to property businesses and those that lead property businesses such as yourself. So maybe to that point, I mean, these are just a couple points that I made that is different between traditional marketing and opportunity with social media marketing. But perhaps you can speak a little bit to, um, you know, how it is that social media marketing has been utilized within your group. You've alluded to it already. But specifically in South Africa, um, how it is that you find that agents are encouraged to, to, to channel into social media and utilize it? Yeah, um, again, I go back to the company structure. And funny enough, our marketing company talks about an always-on approach to social media. And I think that that is absolutely key. And how do we transition that message 
across to our individual agents because yes, we've got a monthly fee where you can join EXP South Africa, but what is very important for an individual agent is to allocate a certain amount of funds to marketing themselves as an individual brand and as their own business. Now you can reach audiences which are absolutely critical to you as an individual agent. And those audiences involve vendors, suppliers, uh, other agents, not only within our own EXP fraternity, but most certainly external agents, competitor agents, because those agents offer good re referrals at the end of the day. And I think those relationships are absolutely key. How does the agent then extend into investor base, uh, into developer base, into sellers, buyers, uh, potential landlords and rental specialists or rental opportunities as tenants? And I really believe that an agent should be taking an element of their marketing spend on a month to month basis, allocating it to featured listings to boost your listings in the traditional manner. And I think that's going to reduce over a period of time as you extend into media circles, which really boost you as an individual brand that boost your business. But again, in a measurable manner where you've got the ability to identify the database that you're working with. It seems to have a little bit of a disconnection here, uh, interruption in power, but I think Andrew makes really important points here. Um, the one, I think the last point that he makes reference to is the measurability of this. I see we've got you back, Andrew. Um, and I really do believe that beyond just getting exposure for your listings, it's super important too to create top of mindness for yourself, that familiarity, that trust. And I think that would move us on to the next uh, slide, which is really important to, to consider. So there are a few ways in which a property practitioner can position themselves and create that trust. One way is um, area specialist campaigns and advertising. This is a way in which you can obviously claim your suburb and dominate certain operating, are um, operating areas. But really, what I think is fundamentally important here is for where agent can actually showcase that they understand the area that they're from. That most of the time, agents are actually locals to that area. And they've got a story to share about that area. Um, and I'm really excited because we're going to be speaking to a top agent n in not too much time. But I think a really nice way to execute it is position yourself as an area specialist, but not in the old-fashioned way, but a way in which we're, we're showing that not only do we understand our areas, but we care about our areas, and we are in the business of matching people to their dream homes. Um, maybe your thoughts more generally on this sort of marketing messaging, um, Andrew? Yeah, so I've heard a saying in a, on a regular basis in the real estate game, uh, be the area specialist, but in order to be that person, you've got to be a, a good agent. And a good agent at the end of the day knows the building. A, a great agent really knows the neighborhood. So just picture that sort of uh, that circle in your neighborhood, understanding that neighborhood. And an excellent, uh, an excellent agent really understands the community. Now, if you can under understand that community from a real farming area, a base perspective, and extend that into social media circles, like I recommended earlier, where you're tapping into relationships uh, within that space, but reaching out beyond those boundaries, beyond those farming areas, because you want to look for people that are relocating into your specific space. Now, if you understand your stock, you know your stock, you know your neighbor, you know your community, and you know the buildings within that environment, you can't go wrong. Absolutely correct. Um, and I think, you know, this sort of marketing is just one way that you can tell that story. Um, and even inviting others from outside that area to say, speak to me about this area because I understand my building and I understand my neighborhood. What a really cool way to put it. Um, Another thing to tap on, uh, to sort of speak to is the testimonial ad. Now, I feel very strongly about this because there are multiple brands around South Africa and the world that have really tapped into their, their, their client's experience um, to, to proliferate their own brand. The testimonials, the success stories of how people have experienced what it is that you're doing. Now, I mean, I've seen loads of really amazing testimonials that are poured in for uh, property practitioners. And 
one thing that I say is that there's an opportunity for you to make a really cool campaign out of that, but you should be selective in what story you choose to sell. So something for me is it's one thing, uh, there, there's one thing for me when a testimonial just sort of says, great guy, he wore a nice suit and he drew, drove a nice car. <laughs> um, but it's another thing when a person speaks to common issues maybe that they've experienced in the past with property transfers. This example we showed on screen spoke to the strength of the communication of the particular agent and keeping them informed along the way. So I would say when you're choosing to use testimonials for your advertising, you should use one that really highlights your best features. Um, and I mean, you know, just to, and maybe a quick point from your side on that, uh, I, I think a lot of, there's a lot of misconception about property practitioners, and practitioners out there due to like maybe what they felt in the past um, or bad experiences in the past. So testimonials are a great opportunity to show that you work at a certain level. Um, what, it, what is it exactly that you hope for your agents to achieve in their testimonials if you were gonna sit back on a Sunday, flick open the newspaper and read those, um, those comments? Yeah, Theo, you know, I, I really look at uh, our business from a point of view, success breeds success. So our first point of call is uh, attracting influential agents and producing agents. And a great example of that is McKill. You know, he previously did, he had a good experience in his previous company and his previous business. He's transitioned across into EXP South Africa. And what's happened? He's doing rentals. He's doing sales. He's even become his own developer at the end of the day in terms of managing his own stock and those kind of things. And I think it is so important that if we think back again in time, how important were those written testimonials when you were interviewing an individual? How important were those references to make sure that you were accurate in terms of your overall approach? So we've got one measure within our business, which is a starting measure just to show how successful individuals are. And these are our cap agents. And today we just announced our fifth cap agent, Mark Holder. We had Brian Super during last week. We've had Louise Duplessis, Liz Nell, uh, and uh, Lydia Foster, all cap agents. And the lovely story is they can go out there and almost create a brag book for themselves, uh, tell their story around their successes, but at the same time re receive those references and portray it out in the social media spaces at the right time, at the right pace, in the right place. And I really believe those testimonials go a long way in terms of determining the credibility, uh, the trustworthiness of an individual agent, and I would certainly promote that within our brand. For sure, I couldn't agree with you more, and what, what cool short stories to share with us today. Um, I think, you know, one last way in which you can tell the story is maybe a slightly more traditional way, um, to, to market yourself and your own personal brand as a property practitioner, but it's actually the properties that you're selling, the sold stock. Now, the old, old way is, you know, we can slap a board in front of a house and say sold and hope that some guys drive past that and say, hmm, I wonder who sold that board. Still an effective way to market, but the opportunity in social media is that we can go beyond that. The opportunity is that we can actually tell a little bit of a story about about this property that we sold. We can speak to um, how quickly we sold it, maybe what percentage of the asking price we achieved, um, and really showcase our track record. Now, I, I think it's really important for agents to, and, and property practitioners rather, to keep a fastidious record of their track record and what it is that they're selling. But maybe to speak more to social media as a way to communicate the good work that property practitioners are doing. Um, I, I'm sure you would agree with me, uh, Andrew, that this is just yet another way that an agent can really stand up and say, well, if you don't believe what I say about myself and you don't believe what my clients say about me, this doesn't lie. Absolutely, Theo. So I think you'll agree. Uh, you want the quickest, fastest, most efficient way of selling your very own property. And if you can do it through an excited and energetic and an accurate agent, uh, there's no reason why that agent can't go out there and create that brag book, that testimonial to confirm sold stock, etc. So I really believe the end of the day, you know, 
a happy and excited agent will bring an extremely happy seller and an even over the moon type of buyer into their environment. And so that, that sort of uh, extension into media circles, social media circles, uh, becomes a, a great story and an incredible storytelling opportunity by the individual agent themselves. So we would certainly promote that. We would certainly uh, ask our agents to be out there, uh, spending a bit of money in that particular space to really put uh, their testimonials and their sold stock awards uh, out in the marketplace at the end of the day. Awesome, that's super, super cool. And I think talking about exciting agents, um, you know, I'm gonna maybe tap into Michael, who's been patiently waiting in the background. Uh, Michael, just checking in here, are you with us here today? Um, super excited to have you on the show with us. How's it going, man, from beautiful Cape Town? How are you doing, too? I'm good here, eh? Yeah, no, all good. A little bit, a little bit sad that I'm not in Cape Town like you are, but all good, my side. Yeah, look, uh, for my side, um, Cape Town is a very special place, I must say. I, uh, as you can hear it, I'm not from South Africa originally, so I'm from uh, Belgium. And uh, coming here for 13 years already, and I decided about six years ago to move here and, uh, you know, take a big leap into the unknown, and uh, I yeah, never look back. It's an amazing place. Well, congratulations on, on moving to, I think it's the, 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 it was voted the third best city in the world this year, so not a bad, not a bad choice. Um, so you're familiar with us at Flow. You've obviously been with EXP South Africa for some time. And more importantly, I know that you're, an, you're a property practitioner, but also an entrepreneur that's at the forefront of trying to do the best things that you can to set yourself apart um, as, a, um, as a property practitioner to attract either buyers, sellers, or anything that else that you do. Let's maybe first talk to your social media, because I do know that you have a pretty, a pretty good following on social media and you post really cool content. What is it that you're thinking about when you're posting that content and why is it that you're posting that sort of content fairly regularly? Um, well, having a lot of following is very relative. In the end of the day, it's really finding your network and uh, harnessing it with, uh, with social media. I think social media is really a tool that you need to use to, um, to make your network stronger and to build your network. Even if your engagement is not a lot, if you have one like, but that one like can get you into, into a sale, then your social media campaign is already very successful. So I would not be too blinded about how many following you have. But when I, when I do my social media, um, then I really look into uh, creating uh, quality content, but also content that is easy to, you know, for, easy for the eyes, needs to be very attractive. But also you don't want to create content that takes you a day to, to you know, to post, because sometimes you always jump a bit in the unknown if a post is going to do well or not. And uh, you see that a lot with content creators as well that they usually say when their social media blows up, it's usually a, a post that they really did, you know, they had like a 10 minute work on it just out of the, just very spontaneous and they would never have a, a guess that this would, would be the most successful. So I think that's the most important thing, you know, be, be very um, diverse in what you create, do a bit of a personal content, do a bit of, uh, do property content, but, you know, let them see the person beyond the, the real estate agent. At the end of the day, we're all people and a sale is an emotional buy. And when a person, when a person trusts you and likes you, then you're already 10 steps ahead of anybody else. Yeah, I think you make a great point there. It's, there's definitely a level of authenticity that comes through in the stuff I've seen you post, but also in you know, your paid media that you run too, together with your organic media, is also very much about you and what you do for your, for your clients. Um, and I think that leads me into the next question I have for you. So you know, you're, you've got a meeting and having a cup of coffee at one of the great coffee shops in Cape Town with a potential uh, seller, and you need to do a few things to set yourself apart, I suppose, to win that trust. Uh, I imagine, obviously, your network and your reach 
all the contributing factors, but what are some of the things that you, Michael, without giving to me of your trade secrets, of course, um, would value as important things for a, for a seller to consider? Uh, well, uh, one thing I need to say about this at first is because that um, this is really what sets apart EXP for me with other, uh, other agencies because now you're an independent agent. Now you have the freedom to do, you know, to really build your own business. And um, that for me made a huge difference because I had a lot of ideas and I wanted to pull my other agency, you know, in that direction and see where the future is at with with real estate. A little did I know that EXP is actually providing all of those tools already. And um, when I speak to, to homeowners and sellers, then I really go really full on on the transparency of my marketing strategies. And um, I think a lot of agents till to this day, they, they are comfortable with the national uh, marketing and uh, on property 24, private property, and from their uh, agencies, email marketing and such, which is definitely very effective. But if you really want to make a difference, I think that there's a lot of different uh, possibilities and uh, uh, alternatives that you can do as well. Especially from my side, I tap into indeed in a lot of international networks. Um, a lot of young entrepreneurial networks that, you know, in Cape Town, I don't know if, if you know that, but it's really one of the most thriving digital nomad or, um, you know, location independent destinations. And uh, a lot of uh, people from Europe come here. We have a very good network here. And, um, you know, that is definitely something that is that I tap into very nicely and that social media really helps as well to, um, to portray myself also in Belgium or Germany or wherever those people are, even though they don't see my face on a community event. And um, yeah, I think that is something that, um, uh, that sellers are very attracted to, it's the international reach. Yeah, I think that's a, an, a, a really cool point that you make. Um, you know, I understand that you're, 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 a, you're an international citizen. You might be settled in Cape Town, but you're a citizen of the world. Um, and, you know, to that point, um, now just to link in being top of mind, social media, marketing, reach, having a good network, being in your position where you've got potential buyers and maybe back in Belgium and other uh, European countries and potential sellers too, perhaps, uh, where the buyers might very much be in South Africa, I think it presents a, 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 a quite a unique uh, opportunity for you. Um, and you've already slightly spoken to it, but I, I would like you just lastly to elaborate on being, uh, you know, more global in your practice, um, how it is that social media and other digital marketing channels have allowed you to really get going on that front. Yeah, so um, I, I had the privilege of being able to travel a lot um, because I also was working in tourism. Uh, before I actually came to Cape Town. And um, I came to the understanding that even though I've been traveling a lot, it's very difficult to monetize that. But now we come to a bit into an era where, you know, the world is becoming smaller because of technology. And what is technology? Basically, technology is the, um, um, is the ability to travel through space and time more efficiently. And um, what we do with social media now, one, you have the advertisements, two, you have your organic reach, and then you also have the influ influencer marketing. And those three pillars of social media are actually very important to, to combine. If you have one advertisement, it's fine. But if you have an advertisement that links to a page where you, have, where you don't have any organic marketing, yeah, then, you know, then you lose already kind of a bit of credibility. So that is one thing. And um, yeah, like I say, my network here in, uh, in South Africa is very international, which which, which makes it super easy to, you know, to, um, to connect with everybody because the, the young profession, uh, the young entrepreneurials that are here in South Africa, they travel to, um, to Germany or to, to Belgium or wherever, wherever they are. And those people, because they know your face and because you're a like-minded person, they will refer you with, with very quality leads. And, um, you know, real estate is a numbers game and it also has a snowball effect. The more you, uh, the more properties you have, the more you sell, the more you sell, the more referrals you have, the more referrals you have, the more, you know, people come to you basically and you don't have to do uh, active marketing or spend a lot of money on marketing. 
So uh, I I um, think your your point there yeah. uh, is just perfect for me to to basically wrap on uh, wrap up on because you know it's exactly that, is that your marketing has the ability to influence circles. Even if you're not talking directly to the guy that you want to speak to, to give you the mandate, for example, um, immediately, you want to be influencing his circle so that that referral comes. And I do know that you know, a lot of the good work that gets done and um, opportunities that come through for, um, for agents and, and property practitioners are referral business, so how better to spark the flame of a referral than um, through effective marketing. Um, so firstly, I just want to thank you so much for your contribution. It's been awesome to have you on the show, and uh, I wish you nothing but success to carry on and, and conquer Cape Town. So thanks again, Mikhail, for, for joining. Greatly appreciate thank it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, it was very wonderful. Awesome. And over and back to you, Andrew. Thank you so much too for joining me today, having this interesting discussion. Your input has been most valued, and uh, best of luck for everything that you're looking to do within the market. Yeah, Theo. Thanks very much indeed. You know, I, I go back to thinking about Glenn Sanford, our founder of EXP, and uh, started the company back in 2009. And he often talks about connecting the unconnected. Uh, so just picture that. It's an incredible saying because you guys are doing exactly that. You're connecting people through your circles that you off offer. You're an incredibly young team that you've got that are extremely creative, very forward thinking, love the work that you do and the services that you offer to our very own agent team. Uh, excited about the future, working with you guys. I certainly believe that you are the future of real estate and I really appreciate having had the opportunity to be on your show t today. Uh, it's greatly appreciated. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you so much for being on the show with us today. And what amazing compliments. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today. Until the next episode, keep doing what you do and tap into all the marketing that you can to get more brand awareness. Thanks again. Mm -hmm.